Hey guys and guys, Vlad here with AVT Astro and today we are looking at the Saibon SV305C Pro Astronomy Camera. For those of you that might not be familiar, I run a little Astro blog called avt-astro.com and of course this YouTube channel, so if you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. Over the last 25 years, I've had the privilege of owning over 100 scopes, more accessories than I could count. And having said all that, let's take a look at this beautiful new camera. Alrighty guys, so here she is in all her glory. The SV305C Pro. Um, so this is a USB 3 camera. Um, it does have, you know, that's the USB 3 plug there. Um, and it's also got the uh, guide port the ST4 there. Um, Size-wise, uh, if you have, you know, like one of uh, SV Bonnie's uh, previous cameras, this is the 305, this is the 205. So as you can see, physically it's quite a bit larger camera. And, you know, having said all that, kind of looked at the specs of the camera. Let me show you the sensor as well. Very nice looking. Uh, let's take a look at the actual specs on the interwebs for this guy. All right guys, so here is the camera online on um, Amazon right now. So it's currently retailing for 173 bucks. Uh, and then I just wanted to scroll down and kind of go over the specs with you guys. Uh, you know, of the camera and kind of like the key char characteristics of it. Okay, so uh, the camera lists a very low uh, read noise. Uh, that's good for if you're doing deep sky type of stuff. Um, I kind of find this curious because they advertise this primary as a planetary camera, uh, but I will cover, you know, how it does on deep sky as well. Uh, so the main thing, you know, for me anyway, the reason that I was interested in reviewing this camera is this right here. Uh, so it's 1080p, so not very high resolution, which is perfectly fine for the planets because they're tiny anyway. Uh, the important thing is like, check out this uh, frames per second that it could capture very, very fast. Uh, so this is actually about uh, more than three times faster than the SV205 uh, that I've reviewed. I'm linking, uh, you know, in my review of this up above right now. Going back to the uh, 305, kind of linked uh, to the, you know, quick uh, frames per second. It does have a large memory buffer, which, you know, helps you basically store all those images that you're capturing very quickly. So that's very nice. And it also has 12 bit uh, basically a uh, color game on it. So kind of scrolling down here, you know, it kind of talks about some of the same type of stuff and the ways that you could use, uh, you know, directly with your uh, telescope or of course, you know, with the guide camera, it does have the ST4 port, port built in. So if you're still using that old school technology, you could definitely do that. Realistically guys, most people these days do not use the ST4 port. You're gonna be using USB. 3.0 communicating directly with uh, your mount. All right, and then so just in case, you know, you're kind of like considering, you know, like the difference between like the 205 and the next step up the 305, you know, I'm gonna be talking more from a planetary perspective uh, first here. You know, price-wise, obviously you're paying twice, almost, or more than twice the price really. Uh, here's a, a AI summary, you know, of the differences between these cameras. So the resolution is really not that much different for the plants. You're really not gonna care. What I find actually really curious here is this right here. Um, so basically the uh, 205, it's got actually a smaller pixel size than the, you know, 305. Uh, which typically for the planets, you'd probably prefer the smaller pixel size, especially if you have a shorter focal length telescope. Uh, so that is kind of interesting. The other advantage that you're kind of getting is that you're going from 10-bit to 12-bit color. So basically, you know, kind of like a more smooth, whiter uh, color gamut. Alrighty, guys, and having looked at the specs of this guy, you know, compared to even like this guy, let's step outside and see how it is to actually use this in the real world. Hey, guys, welcome outside. So let's check out how the SV305 performs in action. Saturn's, uh, you know, well placed. The scene's finally good tonight. I've had terrible, terrible scene. Tonight it's actually pretty decent. So let's check out how it does. All right, so the scope that I've got going on tonight is a Celestron. C8, the next there, 8SC. Um, camera is just plugged directly into, you know, into the back of the scope. Um, so the focal uh, length is basically right around 2,000 millimeters. So um, to start off here, I am using Sharp Cap. Um, this is a current stack that I've got going on, uh, you know, just 
to kind of whet your appetite, but, um, and now let's, uh, save this then, and then I am going to turn off live stacking, and shoot, the planet is gone, so let me recenter this real quick, my tracking is not working super well tonight, uh, and then we'll kind of resume here, all right guys, so I got the planet back, uh, so here's Saturn, um, Scenes kind of come and go, uh, so I just wanted to kind of show you guys my, you know, settings that I'm using, just real quick. Um, so this is what I think, so like if you do have a C8, these would be pretty good settings for you to use. So um, I've got an exposure of 20 milliseconds, gain is 310. Um, and then, uh, so you know, I, I focus decently well on the planet, so let's go ahead and start the live stack. So this is kind of how it looks like when it's first started. Um, um, you know, you can kind of check out, like, you know, kind of like the settings that I have on this screen here. Uh, this is basically, uh, just in case you're not familiar, SharpCap is uh, what I'm using, this program here. It's super awesome. Um, it does basically everything for you automatically. So instead of you, you know, having to, like, back in the old day, you'd have to capture a video. And then you'd have to uh, put in this auto stack and, you know, kind of stack it. And then um, you'd have to, you know, put into Photoshop and do, like, image editing. You can still do that. Probably get better results, you know, if you're seeing super good on a particular night. For most nights I've seen, guys, this is about as good as I can get it right here. And it looks pretty good. Um, and then, uh, so for flame, frame filtering, uh, what I've got is so basically it's stacking the best 35% of the frames. Um, and overall, yeah, I mean, damage is coming up pretty darn nice then. Now, guys, I will say uh, with this camera, um, it's very fast, uh, you know, so that's kind of like one of the big things is that the frame rate is, you know, really quick on this thing. Um, so, yeah, I mean, so far I am impressed. So I'm going to, you know, kind of mess around with this a little bit more. And uh, actually while i've got the screen going on here so let me save this stack as well but it's not too much different than the previous one okay so the other thing that i you know like as i was kind of messed around here so if you go into lx mode here right you could check out like all the exposures and this thing like i mean it gives you the option to do like a crazy amount of exposure so i'm actually going to try this camera for eaa for doing deep sky so i want to see if it does that uh, and then the gain goes all the way up to, I believe, 450. Let's see. Yep, 450. So that's actually, you know, like a very good amount. I think I'll be able to use this even for deep sky type of stuff. Okay, guys, and here is the final stacked image from uh, straight out of SharpCap. Uh, basically not edited with post-processing at all. I just kind of cropped it out a little bit more to make a larger scale. So overall guys, I will say this is the best result that I've gotten uh, all like, you know, like fall uh, on Saturn. Tried many times, my scene has been terrible. Uh, this is even included in my 16 inch meat advanced coma free, which should theoretically like whoop this uh, C8, uh, you know, like on a night of good scene. But yeah, um, you know, take it for what it will. The camera probably did have something to do with it because it does have that really fast refresh rate. So you are able to capture more images that are, you know, like in times of better scene. Okay, so next up, I've got, you know, just like a random misery object. This is M16, it's a globular cluster. This was taken with my Mead 16 inch advanced coma free. Uh, as you can see, the image scale is huge. Now that that telescope does have a focal length of 3200 millimeters, so it's very long. Um, <clears throat> so the, the smaller sensor size is really an ideal, um, you know, for like larger scopes. For smaller refractors, I think what this would be more ideal with, or if you have an SCT, you would want to use a reducer. Now I will point out, like, look at the stars. They're like, you know, quite yellow, right? And uh, this was actually true, like even on Saturn, although Saturn is naturally also kind of, you know, works pretty well. Um, I actually even uh, reached out to SV Bonnie, you know, I asked them like if this is normal and they said that this yellow tint is normal, you know, on the image. So I, you know, overall that's to me kind of weird. Like this is the most yellow I've seen on any camera, including their, you know, like 105 and the 205. Now you can edit this out, uh, you know, very easily with, you know, just uh, level adjustments, but straight out of the box, yeah, it does have this yellow tint. Um, uh, by the way, this is 176 uh, second exposure. So for EAA, this camera is definitely usable uh, on smaller objects. 
uh, preferably probably with a faster uh, short focal length refractor. Alrighty guys, welcome back inside. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the uh, clips of uh, you know actually using this thing in the real world. Uh, so what do I think about the camera? Overall guys, um, I'll sum it up with, you know, this way. I was able to, I tried many times this summer or actually I guess early fall to capture Saturn. Um, you know, kind of one that's uh, at a position that type of deal. Uh, this thing did capture the best, you know, image that I have had captured of Saturn, even including all my APOs, including my mid 16 inch advanced comb free. So I will say uh, this camera, I think, you know, because of that really fast, you know, capture rate does is able to better capture those moments of really crisp scene. Pixel size, again, on this thing is kind of interesting. I wish that it actually used a smaller pixel size, you know, for the planets that actually be, you know, kind of preferable with a lot of telescopes. I mean, if you have a big old SCT, like let's say if you have like a C, uh, like, you know, 11 and higher, you know, the larger pixel sizes is fine. Uh, with shorter focal length scopes, you are going to have to use a bigger Barlow factor, you know, just due to the uh, larger pixels on this. Um, although, however, as you saw with the C8 that I used, I was still able to capture a very nice image of, uh, you know, Saturn. It looked great. Uh, for deep sky, it is uh, capable of doing deep sky, um, as you saw. Um, overall, the exposure time is definitely long enough. It's got a pretty sensitive sensor. The sensor size is really small, so you're definitely going to have to use focal reducers with, you know, SCTs for sure, maybe even with uh, refractors. Uh, this would work a lot better with the short focal length refractor than SCTs for deep sky stuff. Uh, the biggest downside, you know, as I kind of mentioned, is I don't know why, you know, it does have that yellow tint to the image. So that's the only thing that I, you know, kind of didn't really enjoy about the camera. Uh, so anyhow, yeah, it's a really good camera. Um, if you guys have any questions, comments, or anything like that, Please leave them in the thumb below. If you're not subscribed, again, do, please do consider subscribing. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.